She's pretty chunky. Yes, so. What is current and how does it relate to musky fishing in northwestern Ontario? It actually baffles me how many times I get asked from viewers, from clients, from just friends of, you know, of mine that come up here and fish. How do you know where the current is? How do you know which direction the current's going? In the simplest terms in Northwestern Ontario, all the water flows north. And I know that doesn't seem right, but if you've ever traveled between Dryden and Thunder Bay, halfway down there, a little more than halfway, there's a sign that says the Atlantic watershed and the Arctic watershed. And what that is, it says every water body east of that line flows into the Great Lakes and ultimately through the St. Lawrence and out to the Atlantic Ocean. Everything west of that flows north and ultimately for most of our water in Sunset Country flows north into the English River, into the Winnipeg River, into Lake Winnipeg, and ultimately into Hudson Bay. Back to kind of the question, how do you figure out where the current is? Well, looking at those maps, pretty much the north end of all these lakes is going to be the outflow. Find your inflows, find your outflows, and then kind of map it through that way, and you'll get a pretty good understanding of why all the water flows north and the direction of the water in any section of the lake. It's funny that current gets talked about so much by the southern anglers. A lot of you guys that fish, the flowages, stuff that, you know, the water fluctuates rapidly, you know, from season to season. We don't typically have that here. Some bodies of water may fluctuate, you know, quite a bit. The last few years we've had radical, you know, High water years to the last year was super low water years. So we get that, but the current itself and we don't have that type of flooding that really affects it. You know, it might be localized with storms, but on low water years, ultimately we have less natural lake current. Higher water years, we're going to have more lake current. And not a lot of guys talk about it when they talk about fishing Canada. We kind of picked up on it early on because of fishing with you know Kyla's dad, Kyla's brothers up on Long Legged. Again, that's part of a river system, a lot of current. And even though I didn't know it at the there time, we go. I was learning about current and how the fish relate to it from Ryan and Jeff and Harry. And as we started to fish more at home, we started to adopt some of those strategies. And something else I want to talk about is how it is different than wind current or wind effect current because a lot of people mistake wind and the wind driven effects of current versus the actual you know underlying current in a body of water what is the difference between actual lake effect current so the flow direction of a lake versus wind effect current. And I'm gonna break down here on the little tykes board a couple examples of catches we've had over the past couple of years to kind of show you guys how that works. But if we if we look at this quick, this first example I'm gonna use, you can see the, the current flow again, it's going north and the current's flowing from you know this creek through this section of lake and up north. Now, if there was no wind on that day, I would expect that fish are going to be set up in relation to the current. If we had, in this example, say a strong northwest wind and the wind was pushing down and we had waves pushing against here, depending on the amount of wind, you could see, you know, a lot of wind effect current hitting some of these points, even though the underlying current in that body of water is still trying to flow that way it could you know counteract itself and it it's kind of gets set up on a you know a spot to spot basis but you have to understand the underlying current in this body of water is flowing north and just depending on where that wind is pushing on that given day you need to kind of read it 
as you're on the water. I don't know about you, but I just feel, I just feel like I gotta let it all out. We just wanna be outside. We just wanna be outside. We just wanna be outside. So I purposely picked this example here, and let's have a quick look at this catch here that Mike and the boys yeah, from the Sad Boy Muskie Club got on one of our first oh, yeah. trips together. It's a good spot, this spot. We'll get one on the rocks later today. Almost guaranteed. Glenn's 56 inch 54 inch right? That'd be good. Pike. That is a big pike. Sure dude, it looks like a ski man. Sure a big fish either way. Which way do you want to take it? She's down. Keep them away from the trolling motor. Yeah, just have a look. I just want to make sure he gets it away from the trolling motor. Gotta get him up. Oh, that's a big fish. Uh, yeah! Yeah! Giant! Yeah! It's not a pike! I was like, if that's a pike. I was like, if that's a pike. spot like this a lot when I'm fishing with you know friends or family or guests about the current in an area like this and because there's so much current flowing through here one section of the lake is flowing through here to another section of the lake doesn't matter how much wind we really see through this area you're gonna have a pretty distinct flow of water going through here and again as that water flows through this point right here that's going to be a current break so as this water flows up some of it's going to get pushed around that point and some's going to come up and go through the natural channel ch channel sorry but you're always going to have some water that rolls around and there's going to be i don't know how you would uh, describe if it's higher pressure water or lower pressure water but you're going to have water that kind of gets pushed up and pooled in there and then as it kind of swirls around it's going to come back out into the main channel but where you have a lot of current like a spot like this we love that type of a current break this other point here could be something similar you're going to have current going by and then any of your river anglers are going to know that there's going to be like a little you know soft eddy in behind that even though this doesn't have enough flow to really create that the effect is still there and you know you're going to have fish that set up in those spots so in this example i told the guys i'm like because of the flow coming through here a lot of times we see fish set up here where there's a little bit faster flow and we see a lot of bait set up on that area and if there's not fish there we see them set up inside of here because again that flow kind of rolls around and we went in there and on the video you can hear i almost called the spot on where that fish was sitting turned out to be a great fish Buddy. and yeah, it just spot. for me it kind of it, it just it makes me feel that i'm understanding it more when you can go into those spots and kind of pick the spot and understand it because of you know what that lake is telling you find these spots find the direction of the flow and then kind of like you break down with wind pick the you know the heavier current side versus the you know possibly less current 
and break them down both and you'll start to put that pattern together and you know talking about wind I did a video a couple of years ago and it's right here where we talked about wind and wind breaks down a lot different and in our next example we're going to look at one that is more driven by wind but it's still the underlying part of the example has to do with the direction of the flow so let's go check that out That was just a really cool experience fishing with Matt and Ron the first time they had ever been on Eagle Lake and we had a really good day I got that really nice fish broke my rod which you know now we look back and we kind of laugh but you know it's, it's one of those things that happen Matt got this really cool you know rainbow fish right here just a great day on the water and I love bringing people to new to them water and showing them, you know, what we've learned and hopefully it, you know, it translates. And I broke that fish down in, in the video, you know, of that day. But if we take a broader look, and this is a section of Eagle, and Eagle's a little bit different in that, you know, it has that far south section that the flow is naturally going north. And then we have the west arm and all that water flows into Vermilion Bay and it actually flows south down to Detour Point, goes east and then ultimately into the Eagle River where it flows out. So it has, you know, these different flow directions and it can be confusing to some people when they come up here because one section of the lake, the natural flow is going north and the next section of the lake, the natural flow is going east and or south. So if you're not, you know, tuned into that, it can throw you off a bit. And when the water's low like it's been, you don't see a lot of current. But when the water's really high, like we had a few years ago, then you can really see the effects of some of this current. So this year here, we actually had, you know, pretty decent water levels. They weren't super high, but wasn't super low. So, you know, kind of average. And we're fishing in an area, a lot of islands, a couple big bays off to the south, big bay off to the west. And it has little feeder creeks coming in. So there's natural flow but because it's such a big basin it's very hard to define where that flow is going and you know I got some arrows going north some going east ultimately they're working their way to the Eagle River and heading north well I caught that fish right off that point there and the interesting part of this day is that we had very strong northwest winds pushing down so strong that we couldn't fish some of the big basin stuff because of it we had storms rolling through we actually had to go hide behind some islands not far from here and let a storm go over but with that strong northwest wind coming from this basin there's a sandbar that runs kind of across here and similar on this side it's a little bit different it'd be hard to draw but there's a bit of what we would call a current break so the current flowing is going to hit that sandbar and any of that northwest wind or north wind coming down is going to hit that sandbar and create a bit of a current break and on that video i talked about trying to get out of the strongest part of the wind and we did but because that wind was pushing there all day I suspected it was going to push some of that bait fish in and the muskies were going to be pushed up in there. And again, this, even though we have some flow coming north through here, that really strong wind all day was going to push more of that water up against that, you know, that sandbar, that current break. And in a lot of cases there, going back to what my buddy Kevin Wagner had told me, he's like, you have to cast up into the wind, pull your bait down, you know, the direction of the wind into the face of a muskie or again into the current cast into the current pull your bait back up and because we were fishing so close to this point matt and ron were at the front and they're actually casting forward 
kind of upwind pulling their lures down i was at the back and i actually cast into the calm water but now i'm pulling my lure and it was a scallywag i'm pulling it the direction of the current flow so if you think current's coming this way wind's pushing that way and i'm casting kind of into that you know that soft area of the water and that fish come up and hit and it was a really cool fish really cool experience but Again, it's a really good example of areas where wind can meet natural lake current and you get like just a really sweet spot in the water. And David's really good at kind of reading those. My father-in-law, Harry's really good at reading those. Lots of guys talk about that, you know, that little current seam coming off of a point. You might have fish set up on the wind side or on the leeward side. And it's always about finding that little sweet spot in there. And that's what I found on this example was that sweet spot where the wind was meeting the current and it was just a perfect, kind of a perfect storm. After what? I don't know. Yeah. Oh no. Jesus. <laughs> this right last there. example is the most current, and it was one from late last summer. And we talked about it when it's so windy that you just can't fish, you know, the areas you want to. In this case, we went and took a break, went for a little hike. You know, kind of do what you, you want to do, but on a day where it's super, super windy, you're almost better off to just get off the water and pick key times to be, you know, out there fishing. So that was our goal here. We had really strong southwest winds pushing up this way. And with the natural flow of the lake flowing basically south across to the west and then ultimately up to the north, there's a lot of current in this area and we talk about it actually a lot on this lake. And one of the guys that used to live out here, he's actually my cross shift at work. Terry told us about some of these islands and these points where there's always a lot of current, even though because it's deeper water, you don't necessarily see it or feel it. It, it, flows through there and you start as you spend more time on some of these bodies of water you start to see areas that bait always seem to ball up and it's in these kind of areas where here you got current kind of rolling down a point like that you get current rolling around these islands and the more time we spend out there the more we start to learn it and this day there's a rock pile out here always gets fish sitting around there and especially when you get the combination of you know we got current flowing through there and if you get that nice south wind or a west wind pounding down there again it's like the last example it almost ends up like a current break and it traps bait fish up there and ultimately the muskies are going to be up there and it's a spot that on that given day we knew we were going to fish because we had been seeing fish out there. It was just a matter of, will the wind calm down enough to allow us to fish it effectively? And can we set up the direction that we want? It's easy to just set up upwind and do a drift and kind of cast to where you can cast to. But for us, we don't like to do that. We like to be very methodical. We like to work our way, you know, I think, work our way kind of right around it that direction and it's easy with boat control when your nose is facing up into the wind it's harder when you start to roll down and you want to have your nose going downwind but you don't want to be going too fast so that you can still control your cast so that stuff where boat control comes into play and really knowing your areas obviously we know this area really really well for you guys coming up to Canada, when you find spots on the lake, whatever lake it is that you think are going to be key areas, or at least you want to explore more or fish more, map them out with your auto chart or, you know, 
use your live scope or use your side imaging to learn that area as best as you possibly can so that when you come back on a key time like Dave and I did here, you can fish it effective and you can understand where you want to be and how you want to cast it or, you know, present your lures to that area. Mastering the current takes a long time. We we feel pretty you know confident, comfortable on a lot of these lakes that we fish because we spend a lot of time on them. And that's how you learn to be effective on these lakes is time on the water. And again, it is very hard when you come up for only a week, you know, maybe one or two weeks of summer. And I look at somebody like Brian Scaife, he spends, you know, a couple of weeks on Eagle each summer and he understands that section of the lake that he fishes so well that he can come up here and be effective right away. As soon as he gets on the water, he'll spend a little bit of time, you know, searching for that particular pattern based on weather, but he understands the lake because of time on the water. So I think that's a great example for us. As we go to new areas, and this summer we want to fish Wabagoon a little bit more because it's so close to us, but it's a dark lake. You can't see. It's not mapped super, super well. It's scary, a lot of rocks. So we want to go out and just learn it, you know, a little bit at a time. Again, because it's part of a, a huge river system, it's taking what we already know, applying it to, okay, where's the flow? what's the wind doing on any given day and just slowly starting to learn it and I would say to you guys you cannot come up to Canada and try and figure it out in a week and guys like Sarek they talk about you know going to Lake of the Woods take a small area and learn that area and that would be my advice to most people doesn't matter which lodge you're staying at or which lake you're at pick an area kind of learn that area and understand the current, the flow, the, you know, the fish behavior in a small area, and then slowly start to expand that. And that's how Dave and I do it. And it's picking those key spots and always keeping in mind that you want to fish it effectively, safely. And hopefully as you guys do that and more and more time on the water, as you come to Canada more, you will have more success on our shield lakes. There's one mistake that we all make when we start fishing shield lakes. And this video right here is going to help you guys realize that you're doing it as much as we were doing it. And it's going to help you overcome that mistake and be better musky anglers up on shield lakes. So check that out. And until next time, 54 Bus is out of here. We'll catch you guys out on the water later.